In Good Shape, your health magazine on DW, featuring an interview with a different expert every week. Now, joining us in the studio to talk about heart problems is Dr. Volkmar Falk. He heads the German Heart Institute here in Berlin. Welcome to In Good Shape. I find this quite shocking that a young sportsman like this just collapses. And, and now I want to know, am I at risk too for that kind of disease? Unfortunately, it doesn't only affect uh, athletes, and it's actually more common in untrained people. So it can basically happen to anyone everywhere. And uh, usually a myocarditis, an inflammation of the heart muscle is the cause. And sometimes this leads to arrhythmia, so the heart gets uh, out of beat, so to speak. And uh, this can lead to sudden deaths, like in this case. And, and where does this inflammation come from? Uh, usually it's a viral infection, uh, but it can also have different causes, like some autoimmune diseases can trigger this. But for the most part, uh, it, it is of viral origin. But, but the normal common cold can cause this kind of deadly disease. It can. It's, un it's fortunately rare, but it can happen. Uh, so if after a flu you have symptoms that uh, don't go away, especially dyspnea on exertion or arrhythmias, then it's absolutely mandatory that you see a doctor. And, and I shouldn't do any exercise during the time? In I this case, of course not. Uh, it is not uh, good for your heart to do exercise uh, when, it, when there's active inflammation. So, so what are the symptoms I should go and see the doctor? We've got a question from Pakistan. Our viewer, Navid Ulu Khan, wants to know, he's got a chest pain when he moves and he um, bends over to the left or he lays down on his left side. Is this a cardiac pain? Uh, this would be very atypical. So the typical cardiac pain uh, is more of a burning quality and it has nothing to do with uh, posture changes. Okay. So it's unrelated uh, to posture change, but uh, of course related to exertion. So if you get pain while you start exercise, then that is an absolute warning. Okay, okay. And what kind of diagnostics tests my doctor would do on me when I've got this shortness of breath thing? Um, one would do, of course, an EKG to see if there's any changes in arrhythmias. Then the next is an echo, like you saw in a, a movie. Um, to see the function of the heart, the contractility, and see how the pump function is. And also you can look at the heart valves. Uh, and for myocarditis, uh, one of the most important diagnostic tools is magnetic resonance tomography, where you can see inflammation of the muscle. Okay. So if I don't catch a cold, if I'm very, very healthy and I want to do some exercise, am I on the safe side or are there other kinds of risk I should look out for? Well, usually you can start with moderate exercise without consulting a physician, of course, if you have no symptoms. Uh, but in any case, you should not go for a marathon without any training. So uh, the exercise should follow a, a rule of thumb. So uh, you can uh, subtract your age from 220 and 60 to 80 percent of this uh, value then is the pulse rate that you should exercise or start exercise if you're not a trained athlete. Okay, so, so let's do the math for a typical patient, 60 years so old. So the 60-year-old patient should have a heart rate of 120. And this is the training uh, heart rate they should go yeah, for? for a moderate exercise. And then I can't damage my heart even if I just exercise like this? It is, it is unlikely, but in, in any event, if you experience any symptoms of pain or breathlessness, uh, breathlessness uh, then you should consult with your doctor. When I did my medical training, we, we used to tell the patients with heart failure that they should stay in bed and uh, get some rest. And now the opposite is true. Why is that? Yeah, for many years, uh, that was the recommendation and it's completely wrong. So the idea is today that patients who have heart failure also engage in some exercise and uh, it has, first of all, good effects on the heart itself, but it also uh, relaxes the vasculature and uh, by that reduces the afterload for the heart. So the pump function of the heart is enhanced and uh, um, therefore we recommend, uh, even for patients with heart failure, to moderately exercise. So and if a patient's got a heart failure, can, can they just start exercise on their own and say, well, yes, do some sports? No, there are of course some risks and uh, before they start or engage in an exercise program, they should consult with their physician and make sure that all underlying causes of heart failure are treated appropriately before they start them with their exercise program. And it should be done under, under medical uh, supervision to begin with. And, and what should you begin with? Is it more endurance training or more strength exercises? Um, it's certainly endurance training, but on a moderate level, so with a limited heart rate. But uh, uh, more and more comes into focus in the aging population that we should also train our muscles 
uh, and and do some uh, um, weightlifting. Okay, so exercise is one approach for congestive heart failure or chronic heart failure, but this is not, not the only therapy we doctors can prescribe to the patient. So, so what do you do with, to a patient with heart failure? Well, there is a whole uh, armamentarium that we have to treat heart failure. First of all, we have to treat the underlying cause. That can be valvular disease, can be coronary artery disease or myocarditis, as we saw earlier. Um, and if that has been taken care of, then of course we treat the pump function of the heart by prescribing medicine. We have a variety of drugs that help. Um, then also uh, some devices come into play, such as defibrillators and pacemakers, who can synchronize the heart and increase pump function in some patients. And if everything else fails, then we have mechanical circulatory support devices, um, uh, artificial hearts, if you wish, uh, that can help the heart to pump enough blood uh, to support the body. Which are inside the body? They're, they're, um, they're implanted. Planet? They're yeah. implanted inside the body, but there is a drive line with the current systems for energy transfer that comes out of the body, and those patients need to carry around the batteries along yeah, with their controllers. Do those patients have to wear the assist device forever? Most of them, yes, because um, their heart is damaged uh, irreversibly. Yeah. Uh, some patients with myocarditis are. are um, in some of those patients, we can explant the devices, but this is the minority of patients because we see a recovery of the heart. Yeah. Many of my patients ask me if they get a pacemaker, if this makes the heart stronger. I mean, like in the case we saw with the professional soccer player, he got a defibrillator. And uh, so is the heart getting stronger in the pump function with this device? The, the idea of a pacemaker is to um, get the right rhythm for the heart. But there's a new generation of these devices that also try to synchronize heart function in, in those hearts where the heart is not in synchrony. Okay. And if that is the case, in these cases, uh, the pacemaker can actually help pump the heart to pump better. Okay. Good. Professor Falk, thanks so much for being with us in the studio. Thanks so much. Thank you.